bam, and just like that, now you know how to get crypto market data from the Coin Market Cap API in Python, and you know a little bit of Streamlit, so now you can make a cool website. Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Get Bags, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get crypto market data from the Coin Market Cap API in Python, and we're also going to be doing a little Streamlit app, something light. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to want to do, let's open our trusty Google and Google search Coin Market Cap API Docs. So we can click into the documentation here. So in the top right corner, you're going to see a login button. Open that in a new tab. We're going to want to keep the API Docs open. So once you get signed in, you're going to see this overview. Here's where our API key is right here. Keep this in mind. We're going to need it later. Next, open up a new tab. Go ahead, search Streamlit Docs, and then we can open up the Streamlit documentation. Bam, now here we are in VS Code. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. I think Control tilde is going to do it. Bam, look at that. Nice. So I've got a terminal open. I'm running Git Bash. So if you have not seen my video, I'm going to link it here how to get Git Bash set up so you can have Git Bash installed in your VS Code terminal. No sweat. We're in a folder here. Let's go ahead and create a new folder for our app. So let's use the make dear function. I'll just name it CMC and then I'll navigate to that folder and we're here. So now that we've created that folder, what I'm gonna do is just manually put the files from this video, which you can find on my GitHub. I'll put the link in the description and put them in the folder here. So now that that's done and those files are added, I'm gonna open the folder, which is our current working directory. I'm gonna open that in our workspace. So now you can see our files here. Let's go ahead and open up our coin market cap API and then we can open up our streamlit app as well. So you can never forget setting up your virtual environment. So I have a video, it's the Git Bash video, I think, where I also demonstrate setting up virtual environments. Who knows if I even did it correctly. All right, so we're here, we're in our folder, we got the scripts, but the first thing we wanna do is set up a virtual environment. So quickly, let's just say a prayer to the God of the virtual environment that it works on the first time. All right, here, let's do Python m flag venv which is the virtual environment command and then venv which is the name of the virtual environment so let's go ahead send it on through and then you can see our folder popped up here it looks like it's working it's magic now i can see this select interpreter thing is going on here so what we're going to do let's select the interpreter from our virtual environment and then activate the virtual environment all right, so what I'm gonna do here is you can either click here and it brings up your menu, or you can hit Control Shift P and then Python select interpreter. It's gonna bring up the same menu. And then I'm gonna click this virtual environment here. This is current folder, virtual environments, scripts, Python. Let's see how that does. So let's do source venv scripts activate. Let's see if that works. Okay, nice. Then I'm gonna kill the terminal and I'm just gonna YOLO run the Python program and see if it puts us back in our virtual environment. So I closed the other terminal and then it left this one open. You can see it's activated the virtual environment here. Let's go ahead and install some of these libraries. So let's do pip install requests. Let's do pip install pandas. And then while we're here, let's pop over to our streamlit docs, set up an installation. We see our pip install streamlit. So then we'll copy that over. Then we'll paste our pip install streamlit. So we have our script here. First thing we're gonna do is import our modules. So we did the pip installs, we should be good to go. Here's our coin market cap API key. I'm reading it in from another file, but if you pop over here to the coin market cap dashboard, you could just copy your API key out. You could paste it right here in our headers. So here's our base URL. If you go to the introduction page on the coin market cap API docs, you can scroll down to authentication. And then here is our base URL. While we're here, you can also also see our preferred method to pass the API key is a custom header. So you can see in our custom headers here, we have our API key Then we also have our content type. So next we've got a function, get coin market cap data. We're going to be passing it an endpoint and any parameters. So to get our endpoint, if you go to endpoint overview, you can see here, let's click into cryptocurrency, for example, and then here is our endpoint. So you're going to pass this as a string to the function. And then if you want to click in, read a little bit more about it, you can do that here. And you can also see sample responses from the API. And if you scroll down a bit, you can also read about the parameters that you can pass through to customize your response. So here in the function, if there's no params specified, we're just going to leave that blank. And then here we're creating our endpoint URL, which is our base URL. You can see it there. And then we're basically just going to be appending this to the URL. 
Here's our response. We're going to be sending a get request to the endpoint URL. We're going to pass the parameters and we're going to pass our headers as well. We're going to print a response just to show that it's working. And so if it was a success, then we're going to store that JSON into a variable here, and then we're going to return that. If not, then we're just going to print out the faulty status code and then any exceptions, we're going to raise that and print that out. So here is our first request essentially to our V1 cryptocurrency map endpoint. We're going to use the function and then just a bit of formatting here. We're going to format that into a data frame. This, we're just reviewing the data. And then last, we're just going to create an Excel file called map data. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. <laughs> so it seems like the gods of the virtual environment have heard our prayers, but we do need to install OpenPy Excel. So we're just going to run that on through. Looks good. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. Nice, so here is the length of our map data frame. Here's a little sample you can see. And then also we have our first row and then we have our last row. Safe Moon Solana, it's probably not a scam. And as you can also see, here is our Excel file. So that looks like it was a success. All right, hell yeah. So here's our map data here. We can see the coin market cap IDs. You can see some rank information, names, symbols, all good. But ID is going to be our primary key essentially for referencing across the API. Let's keep it moving. All right, the next endpoint we're going to hit is this V2 cryptocurrency info. So if you pop over to the docs, we can see V2 cryptocurrency info, and then you can see the parameters. So let's pass some custom parameters here. So here's our parameters. We're going to send one or more comma separated coin market cap cryptocurrency ID say that three times fast here we have in our custom headers this is going to be id and then we have comma separated coin market cap ids and we're going to pass that as a parameter here so this is how you can pass custom parameters let's go ahead and run that so i just added a quick little print statement well i better save the file first before running it so let's run that make sure everything works swimmingly and then here is our basically info data i didn't see anything very valuable so just showing an example of how to hit parameters Awesome. Up next, we're going to be hitting this V1 cryptocurrency listings latest. So if you pop over to the docs here, you can see here it is. Click in. You can read about it a little bit and you can also sort your response. So here we have our custom parameters. We're going to set a limit of how many items to return back. And then we're also going to sort by market cap. So here we are. We're passing the URL. We're passing our parameters here. And then basically we're just taking a quick look at the data and then some basic formatting, formatting this part of the JSON response to a data frame and then doing a bit of concatenation, probably some formatting magic. And then here we're just dropping a column, then we're saving it to an Excel file. So let's go ahead and run it up. Shabam. Then you can see the listing data drops in here. All right, great. So here is the data set. You can see a bit more data, definitely some technical and some fundamental information for us. So that could be pretty interesting. Next, I'm going to take a look at V1 cryptocurrency categories. So if we go back to the docs here, we are cryptocurrency categories here at the bottom. You can read about it. It's going to return coin categories. So we're just going to return categories for one cryptocurrency ID. We're going to save that to an Excel file. As you can see, it pops up right here. All right, so you can see the data here. We have an ID, so this is a category ID that identifies the category. And then you have some other information. Let's take a look a little bit deeper into these categories. So this last bit of code here, we're gonna pass some custom parameters through. So we're gonna go into our categories data set. We're gonna grab out the zeroth category ID. So that would be basically this ID here. And we're gonna pass that as a custom parameter to our V1 cryptocurrency category. So here is the endpoint category, not to be confused with categories. We're gonna pass the category ID, which can be found using the categories API. Clever. So we're going to pass that through. We're just going to review some of the data here and then pass that to an Excel file. All right. They didn't like it because I had the file open in Excel. Whatever. I got them confused. Can you believe that? So I just changed the name to category data because it was categories data. And that was trying to overwrite like the Excel file that I had open. So anyway, you can see here that our category data is here and then bang bang here we are in our category data you can see our id and then it's all from the ftx bankruptcy estate rest in peace and you can see some technical information and then you can also see the different coins that i guess are part of that category as you scroll down here and then it also has information about those coins as well so let's do something useful now so i'm gonna pop over to our coin market cap streamlit application and we'll run through it, but let's test it just to make sure it works. So 
this is where we hope and pray that everything works. So let's do streamlit run and then with the name of the file, so cmc streamlit.py, we're gonna cross our fingers and hold our breath and see what happens. Booyakasha, look at that. Okay, so look, you're looking at it, you're like, it's just numbers. It's not that exciting, but it's a little, it's a little interesting, at least to me, <laughs> which doesn't say much. All right, so check it out. So we've got our Bitcoin returns here at seven days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And then we also have other coins returns. Looks like 20 by top volume, seven, 30, 60, 90 days. And then we're comparing the other coins returns against the Bitcoin returns so that we can look at the relative returns. So we know which coins are outperforming. And then it's sorted here by the highest relative return in the last seven days. So this Ponzi scheme or coin here is outperforming by a large amount. It's just basically the relative returns there, not particularly useful, but let's just dive right in. So I'm gonna use control C to stop it so we can just quickly run through this app here. So first we're gonna import our modules, then we're gonna read our Excel file here into this variable listing data. Then we're just gonna do some basic column renaming. We're just gonna make them a little bit shorter. So here we're just gonna remove all the stable coins because we wanna look at the relative returns to like volatile coins. Then next, we're gonna sort our data frame by 24 hour volume. So here we're gonna specify the number of listings to return for to look at relative to Bitcoin. Then we're gonna take a subset of our listing data. So what we're gonna do is anywhere where the listing data is not Bitcoin, which is ID one, we're gonna grab the columns, name, volume, et cetera here. And then we're gonna just take the top number of listings. You follow that? Great. Next, we're just going to take out the Bitcoin data into its own variable here, and then we're gonna subset that. This is probably a little redundant, but we're just gonna subset this data so we only have the return information. All right, so I'm looking at the code and this line, it's got an incorrect variable, so I don't know if it actually like does anything and it didn't throw any errors, so that was strange. And it's also repeated right here, so I'm just gonna delete it and see what happens. So then here we're just creating a Lambda, which is gonna format our Bitcoin data into a percentage essentially, and to two decimal points. So we're gonna apply this Lambda to our Bitcoin return data. And then we're gonna rename our index to Bitcoin just for aesthetic purposes. So then here you can see where we've changed the name of the index. And then we've also formatted this into two decimal points with a percentage. So here what we're doing in these lines is we're calculating our relative returns by subtracting the Bitcoin returns from our volatile coin returns. So there it goes. Now we're creating a title here. It's gonna read Bitcoin returns. We're adding some formatting here, as you can see the colors. And then we're just slapping this data frame on there, bam. And then we're creating a little divider. We're doing the same thing, a title, slapping some data, divider, title, so then lastly here, we're creating a data frame and then we're sorting the values by the relative returns in the last seven days. We're putting that in ascending order. So highest returns up top and then we're reformatting the index and then we are slapping it onto our app. So if we run streamlit run and then the name of the app here, then that's gonna open up this page and then here you go and bam and just like that now you know how to get crypto market data from the coin market cap api in python and you know a little bit of streamlit so now you can make a cool website if you want to buy me a coffee the link is right there be sure to subscribe like send it to your friends make sure your grandma does not invest in a ponzi scheme let's get these bags